three days for Dallas to figure out what to do differently and to figure out how to avoid a 3-0 hole against Denver. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz. Glad to be with you here on CBSSports.com. Breaking down Game 3 between the Nuggets and the Mavericks back in Dallas. Let's bring in our uh, NBA columnist, Ken Berger, to break this down. And uh, Ken, uh, Denver has plowed through these playoffs with the exception of one game in New Orleans. What has been the most impressive part for you about the Nuggets? Besides Chris Anderson's full body tattoo and mohawk, I mean, three days between games, that gives them time to get how many more tattoos by <laughs> Game 3. Um, they, they've been wonderful to watch. I mean, their depth from top to bottom, they have great bench scoring with J.R. Smith and Chris Anderson comes off the bench and gives them a lot of post defense and intangibles. Chauncey Billups obviously is Chauncey Billups playing at the same level he played at when the Pistons uh, went to the finals and beat the Lakers. Um, so they've just been, you know, all over the floor, weapons that'll hurt you and sound defensively much more so than a lot of people thought. And they've been beating teams badly as well. The margin of victory for the Nuggets so far through seven games is more than any other team in NBA history. It's 21 points a game. Now, of course, that 58-point win certainly pushes that out there. But if you look at that list, four of the other five teams on that list went on to win the title that season. The 86 Lakers, the only one that didn't, losing to the Celtics. Uh, Ken, when you look at that and you see the Nuggets and whoever else may be in the way, of course, Dallas still in this series, maybe the Lakers, maybe the Rockets, whoever comes out of the East, do you see the Nuggets as a team that could really win the title? You know, I, I think they certainly the way they're playing, it's it's possible. You have to consider that possibility. Um, personally, I, I, I think the Lakers and Rockets, the winner of that series, is going to be the team going to the finals. But, you know, when you, when you have a team clicking, sometimes things just match up and sometimes the chemistry just works. And that's, you know, this is a team that we're, we're talking about here that they hadn't hosted a home playoff game in 20 years. And now here they are with the largest margin of victory through seven games in NBA history in the postseason. So you, you cannot underestimate them. A lot of people, and myself included, have, have done that throughout the year. And, um, you know, they've proven a lot of people wrong. All right, let's not underestimate Dallas at all because they are still a playoff team. And against San Antonio, look good. Uh, in the first halves of these games have looked good against Denver, not throughout the entire game. What does Dallas have to do differently here in game three? You know, they've gotten good production from Dirk. Um, they've gotten good production from their bench, although their bench is, has not been able to hold on to leads and has been giving up leads. Um, so, I, to me, it has to start with your superstar, and that's Dirk. He has to continue to play the way he's playing and, and score the ball. Um, they're going to have to find some way to defend better, and they, they're going to need more. You know, they're going to need more production out of their bench than they've gotten in the first two games. How, how big of a concern is it for Dallas uh, with uh, with Josh Howard's ankle injury? He only played six minutes in, in game two. Questionable for game three. It's a huge concern. I mean, he's sort of been an X factor in my mind with Dallas. Um, you know, he was hurt for so much of the regular season and not himself. And here we here we go again uh, with the ankle. Um, you know, he's he's a weapon offensively. He can shoot. He can drive. And defensively, you know, he can guard multiple positions. So he's a guy that they really need to have, and it looks like they may very well not have him for game three. And you said that Dallas has to get better defensively as well because they were very good defensively against San Antonio in that series. And I understand Denver's a lot more flashy and, and a lot more explosive offensively. But defensively here, they have not been able to – forget stopping Carmelo and Chauncey Billups. They haven't been able to stop Nene. Nene. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that's because Denver is so deep and can hurt you in so many ways. I mean, uh, you know, we know that Dirk is not a defensive player. Uh, they rely on Dampier for that down there. Um, if he gets into foul trouble, they really have nobody to contain those guys. So, you know, th that's the problem they face. Um, you know, they're, nobody expected them to win on Denver's floor. Now they go home, uh, you know, to play in their building, and things may be a little different there. They, they usually are in the playoffs, um, so we'll see if they're able to, to kind of channel that energy and, uh, and play a little better at home. And that building in Dallas, fantastic. It's always sold out as well. You'll be there for game four on Monday. What are you expecting the rest of the series? What are you expecting in game three and, and, and the rest of the series? You know, I, I, think, uh, I think Dallas will, will play a lot better at home. And I think the, they really need to win game three. I think they don't want to be down 3-0. Uh, even, if, even if game four, four is on their home floor, that's not a situation they want to be in. This is a must win for them. And um, I, I expect them to play a lot better and have a much better chance to win game three than the first two. Yeah, nobody wants to go down 3-0 because no, no NBA team has ever come back exactly. for, from 3-0. For more on this series and uh, the other ones going on, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Read everything that Ken's writing here on the website. For Ken Berger, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.